all by myself. I don't have nobody to call on. I don't have nobody to turn. The only ones they can lean on were one another. And nobody was encouraging anybody. Nobody was reminding each other of the promises that he had given them. So we see here in this passage of scripture that Jesus has to come in and reassure them of what he has said to them. Every once in a while, I don't care how deep and how spiritual you call yourself, every once in a while you need some reassurance from the God that you are serving. Every once in a while you need God to reaffirm that which he's already confirmed in you. I don't need somebody to prophesy me something new. All I want to know is that he's going to do what he said he was going to. I don't need to hear about uh, my blessing is coming on the way. I turn around three times, you're going to get a new car. Turn around five times, your house is on. I just want to know uh, that he still has the power. Just want to know that he still, that same Jesus. I don't need to know that he's going to bless me with a new house or a new car. If I, uh, if I do right, I can do those things of my own power, my own merit. But if I serve God, there are certain things that I can't do, but God can help me to be able to do them. Now understand this here, that the Lord Jesus had made them a promise. And even though they had seen the fulfillment of some of the promise, it didn't happen the way they thought it should have. It didn't work out the way their minds told them it was supposed to work out. Mm -hmm. it, Jesus didn't set up the kingdom the way they were thinking he should have set it up. Simply because they were looking for his kingdom on earth. But when they looked around after the third day, even though some of them had seen him, there were still some of the disciples that didn't believe. Oh, y'all gonna make it hard for me today. Still some of the disciples that didn't believe. Some of y'all remember the disciple Doubton Thomas. Why they call him Doubton Thomas? Because he said that unless I put my finger in his hands and see the holes and I can take my hand and thrust it in his side, I will not believe. Some of the disciples didn't believe what he was being told that he had already risen. And even after, I know this is right after Easter Sunday, and we celebrated on Easter Sunday that he got up so we could get out. But even after he got up, and even after some of the disciples celebrated, here it is a few days later, and they're back in their depressed state. Some of them even saw him and they were still in wonder and amazement because it still wasn't happening the way they thought it should have. How many times can we be honest? I ain't asking you to raise your hand. Just look right here at me. How many times can you say that certain things happen in your life and you didn't expect for it to happen the way it happened, but even though it didn't happen the way you thought it should have happened, God still got the glory out of everything that you went through. Can you clap your hands and give him praise? Ah, but Lord, we need your power. We see here that the disciples were in a place when they were uh, going through a spiritual depression uh, and they needed some reassurance that the God that they were serving uh, and the God that they had committed themselves to uh, still had the power uh, to deliver them. Uh, they needed some reassurance uh, that God was able uh, to do everything that he said he was going to do. Uh, because the way it looked on the outside uh, was that, that they were just serving somebody that did not have power. Uh, but how many know that as they were walking, uh, God came and walked with them. Uh, and they didn't realize that he was right there 
are with them. And he began to encourage them and to remind them what he had done and what he had said to them. Every once in a while, I don't care how long you've been on this spiritual journey, we need some reminders of who God is in our life. We need some reminders of what God can do and what he will do if we keep our minds stayed on him. Every once in a while, we need God to remind us. So here we see uh, that the disciples got some reminders. Uh, and as he began to speak to them, uh, he began to let them to know, uh, do you not remember what I told you? Uh, I told you that I would have to suffer. Uh, I told you I would have to go through all these things. Uh, because the scripture has to be fulfilled. Uh, and since the scripture has to be fulfilled, uh, and I am the fulfillment of the scripture, uh, that which I placed in you uh, is got to happen. Uh, but the only way you can really receive it uh, is if you get the power uh, that I have promised you. Yeah. Right. Bible says here uh, that he told them uh, that you need to wait for the power. Nowadays in the life situations that we're going through, uh, that people are teaching others that you don't really need the power. As long as you are a member of the church and you are a good person, you gonna make it. As long as you treat other people right, you just fine with God. But we gotta understand something. God still wants us to be empowered by the Holy Ghost. I don't care how old or young you are, we still need the Holy Ghost in our life. It doesn't matter how long you've been a member of whatever church you call yourself a member of, if you have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. God told his disciples uh, that you got to wait until you be endued with power. Uh, the reason why we can't do the things that God said uh, that he wanted us to do is because uh, we have not waited for the power uh, to come into our life. Uh, we've been running off of this and uh, we've been running slapping our neighbor, uh, turning around three times, uh, but we need the Holy Ghost uh, because it's the only thing that's going to keep you. The Bible says that he told them, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But Terry, wait. Wait in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. We got to understand the power that we have is not the power to be a friend to somebody else. It's not the power to like somebody. It's not the power to love somebody. But it's the power to keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on him. All hell could be breaking loose in your house. Everybody could be done turn their back on you. That's why I said it ain't go the power to make friends. Sometimes you'll be on an island by yourself. But as long as it's you and Jesus, you can make it. We want to have people to be on our side. We want to have people that are going to be our buddies and our pals. But we got to understand something. What I do, I don't do it so somebody can be my friend. Yeah. I do it because I've been called to go. The disciples had to get to a point when they understood that even though nobody else around me is encouraging me, guess what? Jesus took time to think about me. He took time to have an encounter with me. But we can't just stop at the encounter. The encounter lets us see the power, but it's the relationships that gives us the revelation to know uh, that the same power uh, that raised Jesus from the dead uh, is the same power uh, that will lift me out of everything I'm going through. You can only get it by a relationship. You can't just get it by coming to church on Sunday morning. Uh, 
Some of y'all didn't like what I just said, but it's the truth. You can't just get it by just coming to Bible study on Wednesday night. It takes more than that to build relationship. If a man is seeking a wife and he don't ever call her, uh-huh, don't ever try to court her, but try to gain all the benefit. Thank you, sis. I had to fix it up. Young people did. Trying to gain all the benefits from relationship. I'm sorry, I had a moment. See, y'all, y'all can, y'all can. But see, I understand because it used to be where I used to be. Uh huh. Somebody don't want to be real, but I used to be like that. I didn't want to really have a relationship, but I wanted to have relationship. Oh, Lord. But we got to understand that God is seeking more than just a one night stand with us. Uh, he wants us more than just have uh, every once in a while come and see about me praise. Uh, God wants us to be about our father's business. Uh, he wants us to move like he wants us to move. He wants us to give unto him uh, our entire life. Uh, if nobody else wants to love him, uh, if nobody else wants to be about uh, the work of the Lord, uh, I will uh, give God my everything. You don't have to praise him. You don't have to give him glory. But as for me, I'm going to bless the Lord because he's been too good to me. As for me, I'm going to give him glory because you don't know everything he did for me. You can sit down on him all you want. But the last time I checked, I can breathe in, I can breathe out. I can move my arms. I can lift my legs and that's a good reason for me to give him prayer see some of y'all waiting on the house to give him praise some of y'all waiting on the car to give him praise but see it starts with the little the bible says I hear you in the scripture where he come with that head little becomes much when you place it when you begin to praise God for the little bit that's when God knows I can trust you with the match yeah. uh, but we sit right here our whole household ain't been sick in three years. And we won't give God glory. We, ah, we ain't been to the doctor except for a checkup. And we still won't give God glory. Some folk have to go to the doctor every month. Spending so much money at the doctor, they can't hardly pay their bills. And we sit right here with all our good health and supposedly good sense. Somebody say common sense ain't that common. Uh-huh. Some folks will say, well, common sense says. Uh, well, I'm not trying to be a common sense type of person. Uh, but if we want to be sensible, uh, I know that this God that's keeping me, uh, I ain't been eating right, I ain't been exercising, uh, I ain't been doing everything that the doctor's been telling me. Uh, but everything on me, uh, everything in me is working the right way. Uh, so I need to give God the glow. All that admiration and adoration for God has been left in the church. We get to the car, we fussing and cussing at everybody. Yeah, I go there. Yes, I went there. Because we gotta understand something. God wants sincerity out of our whole man. He don't just want you to put on a show. I've been there in my life. I was putting on a show for years trying to look the part of being saved. And then when I really needed the power of God because I had let my fire get so low I couldn't get what I needed from God. But God had to remind me that the more you put in, the more you will get out. The more you bless me, the more I will deliver you. Keep 
sitting down on your praise if you want to. Uh, keep acting like God ain't never done nothing for you. Uh, acting like you've done it of your own merit, uh, of your own intelligence, of your own substance. Uh, but it's for God that I live. Uh, and it's by God that I'm still here. Uh, and since it's by him, uh, I'm going to bless him. I got no other choice but to give him glory. But the only way we can really glorify him is when we've been empowered by him. The Bible says that he told the disciples that you need to be endued with power from on high. A lot of us just got set, just got set, just got status quo because we wanted to just stay at where we were. But God is trying to push us into greater. He's trying to push us into more. And the reason why we can't get the more is because we have not received the power yet but we need to have our Holy Ghost activated uh, you can't go off you spoke in tongues 15 years ago uh, you can't go off you dance for God uh, 25 years ago uh, but the Holy Ghost should be activated every time I think about the goodness of Jesus uh, and all he's done for me uh, my soul uh, not me but my soul uh, cries out uh, Hallelujah! It shouldn't be something that folks got to pump and prime you to praise God. If God has done anything for you, if he's made any type of way for you, if he's opened any doors for you, your hands automatically should be clapping. Your feet automatically should be stomping. And if you got a voice, you ought to be lifting up the name.